Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Corum and Justin Nielsen here with a breakdown of the action in today's session where we saw weakness in the broad market, but energy stocks are continuing to rock. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take a look at a few of them, including Murphy Oil and Sinclair, but also uh, some interesting things happening in gold, too. So we'll take a look at a gold field uh, miner, uh, gold fields. Perfect. We'll do that. First, let's take a look at the major indexes. So the NASDAQ today down about one tenth of a percent. Same for the Dow. The S&P 500 down fractionally and small caps hit the hardest today, down about seven tenths of a percent. So the overall picture here, Justin, is weak, but underneath the surface, we're still seeing the areas that have been working in 2022 continue to work very well for the most part. Right. It's the same story of, uh, you know, your cyclicals, your oil, your energy, your gas, your coal, you know, everything like that. Uh, th those are still holding up well. But I mean, if you look at the indexes, uh, it just looks weak, right? It's uh, we've just undercut the lows of the past few days on the NASDAQ composite, which you're showing right now. Um, that's not good. We're you know, the 50 day moving average line looks like it's resistance. It just can't manage to stay above there for very long. And we're trending below that 21 day moving average line. This is all signs of a weaker market. Uh, so if you're having trouble making progress, look at the general market indexes. This could be a big reason why. And if you're not in those right sectors, if you're still trying to play some of the tech names and stuff right. like that, it could be a tough slog for you. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to feel like you have to do something every day uh, so that you're a good trader. There's plenty of times where it's best to be sitting on your hands, uh, having light exposure, and certainly in this bifurcated market, you have to be very careful of where your exposure is because it's it's definitely a tale of two markets and there's one whole side of the market that is just very weak. The S&P 500, if we go ahead and look at that, yes, it's exactly. not much better. Uh, I would say that the S&P 500 looks a little bit stronger, um, but not much better. It at least is holding above its follow through day from March 16th, whereas the NASDAQ, you know, kind of lost its um, you know, its area on the follow through day. So it's it's still holding above that area. But here we are below the 50 day moving average line. Again, that 200 day moving average line seems to be a line of resistance for the S&P 500. It can't manage to stay above there for too long. Um, and again, there's there's just overall weakness. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going all the way back to the February 24th lows. Um, but there could just be a lot of back and forth. That's what we saw last week up 2%, down 2%, up 1%, down 1%. And so that just kind of makes it tough to make any progress. It really does. And now let's take a quick look at the Dow uh, because we are seeing resistance as well at the 200 day line and the blue chips trying to hold above the 50 day line here and a look at the Russell 2000. So a small cap sitting resistance at that 50 day line as well. And let's also take a look, Justin, at some of the sectors underneath the surface of the action there. So here's a look at XLU, the utilities area down about a half percent today xlp another area uh, to note consumer staples which have been really hot uh for for much of march and so far in april uh down some eight tenths of a percent healthcare also an area we've been paying more and more attention to in recent weeks taking a hit today down about 1.1 percent uh, so those are the groups hit the hardest today uh what does that tell us is is this a sign of rotation or strong areas just uh taking a little bit of a breather well it certainly seems like defensive names have been on the radar a lot. Uh, we were talking about that on IBD Live this morning as we were going through our industry group spreadsheet. Uh, it, it does seem like there's a lot of defensive names that are up there in terms of the industry groups. Um, and so it, it doesn't necessarily bother me too much that those got hit. That's really not where I tend to play anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll be honest, as much as the utilities have been strong, I, I just don't tend to put my money there. It's usually if I'm going to see that the utilities are the strongest area, that's usually when I'm kind of backing yeah. away and not <laughs> putting money to work. Um, but, you know, they, they have been strong and it has um, 
you know, they were due for a little bit of a pullback. So that's not too bothersome if you are in those. And, uh, you know, for, for a lot of people, they're looking at those dividend plays. But don't just rely on the dividend, because if you're seeing capital appreciation diminish and, and start going the other way, uh, that, that dividend can quickly evaporate with uh, some losses. And it looks like Ali froze for me. So um, can you still do the charts, Ali? Well, we can go ahead and let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, Okay, I'm going to share my screen and we'll go ahead and go over to Murphy Oil. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out about Murphy Oil was we have on this pattern recognition for MarketSmith, we have what looks like an ascending base right here. Here's your first pullback, your second pullback, and then your third pullback. And what is interesting about this is these these patterns don't happen very often. This ascending base pattern doesn't happen very often. And what you'll notice about Murphy Oil is it really did get support at this green line. That's the 20-day exponential moving average line. So that's a positive there. But you also have to kind of take into consideration how far this has come. Uh, this has been a really uh, spectacular move in Murphy Oil. Uh, it went from right around 30 to already up to 43.76 in short order. So you have to wonder, is this getting extended? And that's the big situation with a lot of these oil and gas plays. Um, this is in the international explorers and producers. So a lot of these are looking extended. If you go ahead and turn over, we'll look at BINO, which is HF Sinclair. That's one that has been forming this long base. And if you look at the daily chart, um, you can see that it broke a downtrend here and really strong day here. So on the plus side, it has a long base. It doesn't look as extended, especially if you look at that weekly chart. A lot of lot of action back and forth here. But you know, the question here is. Well, is this a laggard? You know, if everything in the oil was already moving, is this a laggard because it wasn't? So uh, those are two things that you have to kind of consider when you're looking at the also rands, um, you know, the, the ones that are later to the party. Uh, Bill O'Neill, the chairman and founder of Investors Business Daily, always liked getting into the leaders. Those were usually the ones that were the first to break out. They often had the most powerful earnings and fundamentals. So it doesn't mean you can't make money on these other ones, um, but you just right. have to be aware you might be late to the party. Oh, and I think uh, Allie's back. Yes, I am back. So uh, a great look there, Justin, at two names in the oil and gas area. And as you mentioned, gold has been an increasing area of focus for us as well. Gold Fields, ticker GFI, is a setup that we've been tracking a, a strong name in this area with a uh, very compelling pullback and a strong move higher here today. Yeah, so what we were looking at, this is one that we've had on our radar because it just had this very nice orderly pullback right back down to that green line, that 21-day exponential moving average line. And so what you, what you want to do is you want to be doing your homework and have these on your radar so that when they do break out, when they do potentially break that downtrend, you're ready to go. And that's exactly what happened today. Now, it was up as much as like 10% at some point today. Um, and so it was, you know, came off its highs considerably, but this is still legitimate uh, break above that downtrend. It's still looking strong. And as much as it was off its highs, this was still up five, uh, you know, over 5% for the day. So that's a pretty strong move, uh, one that could be worth watching. A lot of these gold miners are looking strong. Um, or you could even go with uh, GDX, which is an ETF of the gold miners. Uh, that looks like it broke out not too long ago. Um, even better if you had gotten a pullback to the 21 day moving average line there. Um, so there's a lot of the miners that are acting in uh, in unison here. So it's not that gold fields is all by itself. So that's just one other name to take a look at and looking strong, another area to, to pay attention to. That's right. Okay. And Justin, something else worth noting before we leave here is that we are now in earnings season. So that's something yeah. that investors, in addition to, uh, you know, shifting their exposure when needed with overall market conditions and how their stocks are performing, earnings season has to be top of mind. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so it's it's okay. There's a lot of different strategies out there. You can hold through earnings. You can decide to sell through, you know, before the earnings report. But just be aware that those earnings reports are coming up. Know when your company is reporting so that you're not surprised by, hey, what happened uh, if, if you start seeing it gapping down or gapping up. Um, but also just have your strategy. And I think this is where consistency is important. We've got a number of our IBD Live panelists that say, hey, I don't pay attention to earnings. You know, it, it, it's for good or for bad. Sometimes it's going to work out in my favor. Sometimes it's not. Uh, it's going to all work out in the end to about the same. And they're consistent with that. Others right. say, OK, I'm going to say if I have a certain amount of cushion, I'll hold. If I don't have that cushion, I'm not. Um, you know, Scott St. Clair made the point today, in order to get a big winner, you are going to have to sit through a number of earnings reports. That's just the way it the way it works, you know, in order to get those big winners. Uh, so if you have a cushion on it, that does make the holding easier. Um, if you mm -hmm. don't, then that's up to you how you're going to handle it. Are you going to just go ahead and take a flyer, wait it out, see what happens? Um, and remember, it's not just the earnings report itself, but it's the reaction that you see the stock have afterwards. That's really important because that lets you know how investors are voting. And it looks like Allie froze again for us, but we will go ahead and wrap it up there. Thank you for sticking with us with this uh, little bit of glitches on the technical side, but we appreciate you sticking with us and watching. And we'll be right back here tomorrow on Stock Market Today. And don't forget to catch us on IBD Live. We start 10 minutes before the open, 6.20 on Pacific Time, and that's 9.20 Eastern Time. And we go well over an hour, so you get that opening action in the market and analysis from some of our panelists. So hope you join us for that. You can always check us out at investors.com slash IBD live for a trial. And we hope to see you there or on SMT tomorrow. Thanks for watching.